Today we're going to be creating a super simple flying effect in Adobe After Effects. This tutorial assumes that you're a beginner to After Effects. We're going to open After Effects up and import our clips. We've got two clips here. So the first is the takeoff where my daughter um, we were on just a, a little hike and I brought my camera and filmed this all on my phone. I'm just standing as still as possible. Uh, I actually didn't use a tripod for this um, effect, uh, but it, it would have been even better had I used a tripod. So I would definitely recommend that. Um, you can see though my daughter is just walking down. She gets to the end of the bridge, jumps, and then walks off. And I get some footage of the bridge and that's it and then for the landing all it is is me standing there my daughter's behind me right now and then I tell her to just go jump on that rock she jumps off and walks over so pretty simple clips um, we're going to first do the takeoff. We've got our clip in our composition now. I'm just going to trim this down to where my daughter starts walking over. It's about here. I'm going to hit Control Shift D, delete that first chunk, and drag this other chunk over, get to where she jumps off. I'm just going to get to, I'm going to drag my uh, cursor to where she gets to the highest point in her jump right before she starts coming down. You can also hit control and then the arrow keys or command and arrow keys to go through each frame. So she gets to the top probably about right here. Then I'm going to control shift D and then I'm going to cut out the rest of where she, she runs out. Control Shift D, cut that out, and then move that over a little bit. So now we've just got pretty easy, and that was quick. So we need to obviously show her flying up. So the way that I do this, and again, there's a whole lot of ways that you can do this, but I go to the last frame. Um, right before the end of the clip and um, I, I split my clip there. So again, control shift D and this gives me now the frame that I want that will show her flying up. It's my last frame of her at her, the highest point in her jump. And so I'm going to right click on this and, and go to time freeze frame. And now if I stretch this out, I will stay on that same frame. Okay, first off, I'm going to rename some of these clips. So, Hallie Walking. And I'm doing this by clicking on the clip and then hitting Enter to rename. Hallie jump, or just jumping frame and then the last one is my background and so in the jumping frame um, I'm going to create a mask of my daughter here and so I'm going to go up here to the mask pen tool and I'm not going to spend a lot of time I could spend a lot more time on this but I'm just going to create a pretty uh, basic cutout of her jumping up. All right, and I'm coming to the end here. I'm going to connect that. Again, I could make this a lot better, um, but for the sake of time, I'm going to leave it at that. And then I'm going to drag my background so that it goes behind her, and I'm going to drag this jumping frame up to the very top. So now it looks like she's there, but if we toggle this in and out, you can see 
that it's just our mask placed on top of the background. And so from here, I'm going to click on my jumping frame and push P to bring up the position. Um, and I'm going to click on the stopwatch for keyframe. <clears throat> and then I'm going to move a few frames over and drag the position so that it's up off the screen. And so just like that, we get a pretty simple little fly effect. Again, we've got a, a frozen frame here and then the position has just moved it up. And then you could give for a little bit more realistic look, this easy ease. So I just highlighted them, right clicked, keyframe assistant, easy ease, or you could also just hit F9. And that'll give uh, an even more, a slightly more realistic look. Now you could make this as slow as you want by stretching that out. I like just a nice quick fly up. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is add in sort of a shake as she flies off. We're gonna just add kind of a, a background shake to the camera. And so we're going to come over to our effects and presets. We're going to type in slider control here. There's, or just slider. I already had it typed in there. And then we're going to drag slider control over our background. So what slider control is an expression control in Adobe. So we are going to um, take the position of the background and we're going to what's called express the position of our background using this slider control. So the way we're going to do that is by hitting, by holding Alt and pushing or clicking the uh, stopwatch here. And again, you'll hold Alt while you click that. And you'll notice that your numbers here are red and we've got a position to type something in. So we're gonna type in uh, our expression. And so one uh, expression that Adobe has predefined is called wiggle. So we want, again, our background to um, do this wiggle uh, effect. And we're gonna type in, the first argument here is just how much, uh, sort of what the frequency is how, how uh, strong the shake is. And then the second amount, or the second argument uh, to this wiggle function is the amount of, of the wiggle. So how far is our um, clip actually sliding around? And that'll make more sense as we go. And so we want to control that. We don't want to just give it a set value of 10, we want to uh, control that with, with this slider control here. So there's a few ways to do it. One would be to type in what effect we want to control that with. So we could say effect slider control slider. And it's giving me the error because I didn't have anything in there. That's one way to do it. Another way is to um, click on this little swirly line here and drag that up onto our slider there. And then if when you let go, it'll kind of just type that in for you. Um, and so now you can see when we change the slider around, uh, let's make sure, yeah. So you can see that there's sort of this wiggle happening. Uh, if I was to go a lot, either way, but we obviously don't want to go too much. So now we'll just create, um, now we don't want to go too much. Right now it's at negative 10. Let's do it at about five. And again, we could decrease this number here if we want to go less of a frequency on on this we would just change that from 10 to 5 so i'm going to just see what that looks like i'm going to increase that back up to 10 
bring this up to 10. Now, we don't want it to shake the whole time. You can see that it's sort of shaking through the whole video, and that's where keyframes come in. So if we click the stopwatch here, and we start it at 10, but then we want, after she flies up, we want it to stop shaking, right? We, we really just want a, a quick shake. Um, I kind of like that. So if we're starting it, maybe I'll go to 15. She jumps up, yeah, we'll leave it at that. So if I highlight these, and hit F9, then we get an ease. And it doesn't look perfect, but it's kind of a, a shake effect and you could mess around with these numbers. Um, you could also look into, there's a way if you duplicate these slider controls, you can have full control of the frequency uh, of the wiggle and the amount um, using two separate slider controls. But I'm not gonna go into that right now. I'm gonna keep things pretty simple. Um, but again, play around with these numbers a bit if you want to mess around more with the shake. So the next thing I'm going to do is add in sort of a smoke when she flies away as if the impact of her flying away um, spreads dust around, right? And we're not going to get this perfect. I just have a green screen uh, dust. I'll put a link uh, to it. Again, there's there's tons. If you just do a search on YouTube for dust impact green screen, um, a lot of people have put stuff out there. They're pretty uh, simple clips. This is the one I'm going to be using. So I'm going to drag that dust over my jumping frame, and I'm going to click on that and hit S, and then drag the scale up so it covers the whole screen here. And now I'm going to go over to effects and presets here and type in key light. Oops. So I'm going to take this key light 1.2 and drag that over the dust. So now we want to change this screen color from black to this green. So I just clicked the watermark tool, clicked on the green, and it's now gotten rid of the entire green background. So I'm gonna just drag it to where, where I want it to start. So it's as soon as she jumps off, I want the smoke. Now I can change the position since she's jumping from right here. I want the smoke to kind of start a little bit higher, but the problem is you're going to have a, a hard cutoff, right? Because that's the bottom of the clip and the dust doesn't go any further than the bottom of the clip. So even if I hit P for position and I move this up to sort of match where she's jumping off of, I'm kind of limited in how I can do that because I, I get sort of this hard stop, um, which doesn't look great. I, I don't like that. So I'm going to just reset that back to where it was. And I think that's fine. And then I'm, I'm actually gonna stop the clip about right there. Then I'm gonna hit Control Shift D and delete the rest of this, although I will be using it for the landing. And that's pretty much it for the takeoff here. I'm also going to, I'm noticing that as the camera shakes here, we get this black sort of border around it from the, the frame going down. So I'm going to go to my background and hit S for scale. I'm going to just slightly zoom that in. And the nice thing is because we have that shake, I think it'll look okay that it's zooming in a little bit. Um, 
Yeah, and it doesn't look perfect. I could spend a lot more time on that. But that gives sort of the whole takeoff sequence here. All right, now let's create a new composition. And we're going to call this the landing. So the first one was takeoff. I'm going to come over to landing. And now I've got my second clip here, again, that I've shown. I'm going to just edit the beginning. So I've got, I'm kind of going in reverse order now, right? So I show the background first. Control Shift D, move that to the front. So I show that for a second. And then as soon as she comes in, I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to split that, go to where she jumps off the rock, go to where she hits her highest point. So Control Arrow Keys. About right there, right before she goes to land. And then Control Shift D to split that, delete all this middle portion. Then I'm going to move that over so we get sort of this thing. Though I don't want the black. All right, so now I'm going to go to my first frame. I'm going to go one frame over by hitting Control right arrow then i'm going to hit Control shift d to split and then i'm going to hit the plus sign to zoom in and right click on this uh, the the frame that i split i'm going to do freeze frame on that and so again i have this as long as i want to make it i'm going to bring my background over a bit minus minus to extend that out so now I've actually got um, let's think about this so now yeah we can because it's frozen I can move that over and so now I'm going to this is I'm gonna just rename things hit enter call this the background Hit enter. I'm going to call this jumping frame and then this alley walking. I'm going to move my jumping frame to the top and um, just do kind of the same thing. I'm going to go to my pen tool, make a cutout here of her jumping, flying down. And then, so if I hit that, you can see that all I've got there and I'm going to click on this and hit uh, P for position I'm gonna move her up to the top I'm gonna click the stopwatch to add a keyframe go to the end of this clip and drag her down to where uh, where'd you go sorry I need to come back to here where was she five there we go bring her down and in this case I do need her to match um, so that it doesn't look like she comes down and then skips up right we want her to to match exactly where the next frame starts in from her walking and so for that what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna hit T for opacity and I'm going to bring this down to about 50% to where I can see both my top layer and my bottom layer and then I'm going to try to match it up so if I put this at about 50% and then hit P again I can kind of match up almost exactly where she would be I'm going to delete that old keyframe so now we've got sort of that thing. It's kind of fast. So I'm going to extend this out a little bit. Um, sorry, I didn't want to move my, I want to move this background and move this at the end. So she comes down. 
Yeah, and I'm going to cut off this last frame for there so it's a little bit more of a flow. I, I, let's bring that all the way to the end. There we go. And then obviously I want to bring my opacity back up to 100 so she doesn't look like a ghost coming in. All right, that'll that'll do for now. Hit my P, and I'm gonna easy. I'm gonna ease these in by uh, highlighting and hitting F9. And again, I'm gonna add shake to the video to this video for walking. I'm gonna do that by coming over to Effects and Presets, Slider Control. Put that over Halley Walking. And then I'm going to open up my transform, uh, hold actually, and also my effects. Okay, now I'm going to hold Alt and click the stopwatch on position. And then I'm going to drag this whip over the slider. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to type in wiggle here. And then I'm going to drag that over. And I'm going to, before that effect, I'm going to give it a preset of 10 uh, for the frequency of the wiggle. And then I'm going to click out of it. And I'm going to come up here and add a keyframe to my slider. Bring this up to maybe 15 and then back down to zero. So I've got a starting of 15 right as she hits. That then goes down to zero. I really only want the shake to start once she hits the ground. So that's about right there. Boom. I'm sorry, I want this to be zero. So I want to start at zero and then right when she hits, I want to jump up to maybe, let's see what 20 does. And then I'm going to scale this up as well. Um, maybe I'll add a keyframe here. I'm not sure how this is going to look, but if I had a keyframe for scale, and then just go up to 101%. Sorry, and I'm gonna flip those two. And you don't have to, to do this if you don't want. It's just so I don't get that black border when my footage is sort of shaking. You can scale it up and I'm just doing a keyframe so there's not a sudden, there's a little bit of a weight and it's once she hits the ground that I scale up. Okay, that'll be good enough. Um, so now I'm going to add in the smoke effect again. So I'm just going to come back to my takeoff and find this dust, green screen dust, hit control C and then come back over here, hit control D. And the nice thing is it copies over all of our our effects to it so it's got the key light already placed in there and I'm gonna go find I think they they give us a second smoke effect here that I'm gonna use okay yep I like this one for here so I'm going to delete so control shift D delete the beginning of all of this and then find where the smoke starts and I'm just going to drag it over to where about where she lands. Nice. And then I'm going to expand that up to the rest of the clip and maybe shorten it down a little bit. Nice. And there we have the landing. So obviously with these kind of effects, sound effects play a huge role in making them sound more realistic getting some sort of whoosh sound um, will help a lot and then sort of a thud when she lands and then music always makes everything more fun
So I hope this has been helpful. Um, again, pretty simple fly effect. Uh, I, I hope this isn't too long. You can make this as simple or as complex as you want. Um, but I hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching.